in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. The Islamic month of Rajab is a divine month during which the stars twinkle across the sky. In the month of Rajab of the year 1341, in other words, on February 21, 1923, a shining star rose above the horizon of the holy city of Mashhad. He was a divine gift to a family of well-known religious scholars, also known as the family of Taba Taba'i Qummi. The newborn child had no idea he was born into such a great family, not before he walked in his father's footsteps and started a long journey aiming to acquire the divine Islamic teachings. His parents named him Sayyid Taqi. حسب معلوماتي أن هذا الراحل رضوان الله عليه ولد في مشهد الإمام الرضا عليه السلام وذلك أن والده آية الله العظمى السيد أغا حسين الطباطبائي القمي رضوان الله عليه كان من كبار العلماء والمراجع في مشهد الإمام الرضا In his early life, Sayyid Taki was homeschooled in an old-fashioned primary school under Sheikh Kamal Rouhani, where he learned to speak the Farsi language and acquired the necessary elementary principles regarding the religion of Islam from his respected father. Later on, the newborn child learned from the well-known Iranian calligrapher Ali Mahsus, the art of calligraphy, and from Sheikh Muhammad Mazandarani, the recitation of the Holy Quran and its accurate intonations. Ward al-Shah al-Maqbur, الذي منع حجاب النساء حرم الحجاب على النساء. كان السيد أغا حسين رضوان الله عليه احتج عليه وما فادت نصائحه ولا احتجاجاته لذلك أراد أن يعلن غضبه وغضبه نعم واحتجاجه على الشاه ترك إيران كلها وانتقل إلى كربلاء Since a very young age, Sayyid Taki faced and experienced severe difficulties imposed upon him by the government of Riza Shah, especially after his father, the eminent jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Hussein Taba Tabai Qummi, was forced into exile. One year after his father's banishment to Iraq, in other words, in 1936 Sayyid Taki was forced to migrate to the holy city of Karbala for permanent residence as well. أجل تقوية الحوز العلمية في كربلاء استقدم عددا من كبار العلماء كبار الفقهاء منهم آية الله سيد مرزا مهدي الشيرازي منهم آية الله سيد محمد هادي الميلاني كان في النجف منهم آية الله سيد أبو القاسم الخوئي كان في النجف استقدمه إلى كربلاء منهم أستاذنا شيخ يوسف آية الله شيخ يوسف الخراساني ومنهم آخرون ولذلك ازدهرت الحوزة العلمية العربية والفارسية في كربلاء على عهد السيد القمي في سنة 1365 هجرية توفي المرجع الأعلى سيد أبو الحسن الإصفهاني رضوان الله عليه في النجف وجاء علماء النجف كبار العلماء إلى كربلاء وقالوا للسيد القمي والد السيد تقي قال سيدنا المرجعية العظمى في النجف وليس في كربلاء ومارسوا عليه الضغط حتى أقنعوه نقلوه من كربلاء إلى إلى النجف. Since a very young age, Sayyid Taki was eager to acquire the divine sciences, and thus, at the time, he learned the necessary elementary religious knowledge under the great scholars who lived in the holy city of Karbala. He finished his academic courses and basic principles of religion, literature, 
an advanced level of Islamic studies and are well-known religious scholars such as Ayatollah Sheikh Yusuf Khurasani, Ayatollah Milani, and Ayatollah Sayyid Abdullah Tehrani. May they all rest in peace. عندما كنا ندرس عند السيد الميلاني تفسير القرآن كانت هنالك حجرة قريبة منا كان أستاذنا السيد الميلاني يدرس السيد تقي القمي وأخاه السيد حسن القمي ونحن من خارج نسمع صوت الأستاذ وصوت التلاميذ وتحقيقاته After finishing the basic levels in seminary Sayyid Taqi took part in an Islamic jurisprudence and principle course held and presented by the eminent Ayatollah Milani. May his soul rest in peace. Sayyid Taqi learned so much from this great scholar and his academic courses to be mentioned. At the time, Sayyid Taqi taught Islamic principles to other seminary students as well. Ayatollah حقق السيد التقي كان تقيا بالاسم وتقيا بالوصف كان تقيا يتقي الله كان من عباد الله المتقين الأبرار In 1946 Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi got the approval of his father the late Ayatollah Hussein Qummi May his soul rest in peace to continue his advanced studies in the Grand Seminary of the Holy City of Najaf At that time he had taken part in many religious courses and taken lessons from great scholars such as the late eminent Ayatollah Sheikh Muhammad Kazim Shirazi, the late eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Abu Hadi Shirazi, the late eminent Ayatollah Sheikh Hussein Hilli, and the late eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Abu Qasim Al Khui. May they all rest in peace. <laughs> The eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taba Taba'i Qummi learned a great portion of his knowledge from the lessons given to him by the late eminent Ayatollah Khui. In addition to taking part in courses presented by this distinguished scholar on Islamic principles, jurisprudence, and the accurate interpretation of the Holy Quran, Sayyid Taqi would take part and the Islamic inquiries assemblies where he would have open debates and private discussions with his teacher. Iqummi had an admirable persistence and perseverance in acquiring divine sciences and reaching high levels of knowledgeability. He was a man to study constantly in order to increase his religious knowledge on a daily basis. In a specific portion of time, he took lessons from the late Ayatollah Sheikh Sadr Abda in philosophy. The eminent jurist spent a great portion of his life studying, researching, and teaching in the holy city of Najaf. As a result, he later reached the highest level of practice of religious jurisprudence, also known as Ijtihad. <laughs> كان مضافا إلى الاجتهاد كان يتمتع كما قلنا بالتقوى وبالورع وبالأخلاق وبالتواضع وبالعبادة وبمزايا أخرى كان أنا أعتقد أنه كان من أولياء الله تعالى سيد تقي طبا طبائي قمي received his first written statement for confirmation of his اجتهاد from the late eminent ayatollah Mirza Muhammad Kazim Shirazi May he rest in peace. This written statement was issued during the lifetime of his father, the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Hussein Taba Taba Iqummi. The written statement dates back to the years 1946 to 1947. In other words, by the time he received this confirmation statement, he only had 24 years of age. At that time, he was the student of Mirza Muhammad Kazim Shirazi. Later on, in 1962, the eminent Ayatollah Mirza Abdul Hadi Shirazi issued a written statement for the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi Qummi, permitting him to practice religious jurisprudence. Moreover, the eminent Ayatollah Khui, may he rest in peace, issued a written statement for the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi Qummi, 
permitting him to practice religious jurisprudence in the year 1965. As soon as the eminent jurist reached the ishtihad level of qualification for the practice of religious jurisprudence, he started teaching Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic principles in the holy city of Najaf. A while later, he started giving lectures on Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic principles in the Hindi mosque located in the seminary of Najaf. كان لا يرى الخبر الواحد حجة حتى لو انجبر بعمل الأصحاب أصحابنا الفقهاء يقولون العمل الواحد مهما كان ضعيفا ولكن الأصحاب المجتهدين إذا عملوا بهذا الخبر يرفع ضبع ضعفه وينجبر ينجبر يعني مثل شيء المكسور يجبرون الكسر ماذا لكن السيد القمي ما قال يرى ذلك قال كلا لا ينجبر هذه من مفردات وكانت له آراء أيضا خاصة في الفقه In the year 1981 the leader of the Ba'ath regime in Iraq forced many of the top Shia scholars in the holy city of Najaf to leave the country As a result of this exile the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi Qummi was forced to leave the city of Najaf in Iraq and head back to the city of Qom in Iran. Later on, in the city of Qom, he began delivering lectures on Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic principles. The eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taba Taba'i Qummi has written a variety of Islamic books. Most of his books were written in the Arabic language, and some of them were later translated into the Persian language. Some of his books are under the following titles, Our Opinions on the Islamic Jurisprudential Principles, which comes in three volumes, Exceptions in the Islamic Laws, Al-Durar wal ali fi furu' al-ilm al the reasons behind some religious rulings, which comes in five volumes. al urwal Wifqa, which comes in two volumes. Rulings of Ranting, Rulings of Co-Partnership, Rulings of Ijtihad and Following a Religious Leader, Rulings of Homo's Islamic Taxation, Rulings of Fasting, The Role Model Women in Chastity and Purity, The Commander of the Faithful Imam Ali, the Three Principles of Equality, Repentance, and Harmlessness, Our Studies on the Jurisprudential Views of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, The Martyr of Karbala, Before Birth and After Martyrdom, Umdatul al-Matalib fil Ta'liq ala al-Makasib, which comes in four volumes. The Islamic Jurisprudential Views Regarding One's Will, Partnership, and Visitation of the Kin, The Principle of Piety, which comes in ten volumes. And last but not least, in the year 1984, his statements were published in a book by Abbas Hijani Dashti with the title Lessons from Pleading. The aforementioned book has been republished several times so far. <laughs> دارای اثرات فقهی دارای اثرات اصولی را که مربوط به فقه می شود چنان از اون تحلاجی می شود که کمتر مطالب دیگران به این می رسد لذا دارای تحقیقات بسیار انیقه و دارای علمیت بالا أذكر قبل سنوات وأنا في زيارة السيدة معصومة فاطمة المعصومة 
في قم المقدسة التقيت به بهذا العالم الجليل في صحن السيدة سلمت عليه قلت سيدنا أنا مرتضى القزويني قال وأنا وأنا تقي القمي كان متواضع مؤدب One of the distinguishing virtues that can be attributed to this holy man is that he practiced his faith and implemented every single one of the orders of Islam which were presented to the Muslim community by the household of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them. Moreover, his ultimate goal in his missionary work was to reveal true facts about Shiism to the Muslim community through delivering lectures and sermons and writing Islamic books. As a result of his determination to reveal the truth, he became an eloquent and fearless speaker. He would also hold public mourning processions on the nights of Qadr and the first 10 days of the month of Muharram. One could witness the eminent jurist's deep sincerity through his constant participation in the religious rituals such as chess beating on the day of Ashura, who was a loyal follower of the Prophet Muhammad and his immaculate family, especially Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. As a result, whenever he would mention the name of the, the Imam, tears would start streaming down his face. The late jurist did everything in his power to immortalize the name of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and publicize the practice of the Islamic religious rituals. In order to achieve this goal, he wrote a book about the Imam under the title, The Martyr of Karbala. أنه كان عاشقا للحسين محبا للحسين محيي للشعائر الحسينية ولذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى أراده أن يأخذ روحه في هذه في هذا اليوم يوم شهادة الإمام زين العابدين وأن يشيع هذا التشيع الكبير في كربلاء بدون مقدمات بدون أن يعرف الناس ولكن شوف نريد أن نقول للعالم عشق الحسين حب الحسين وعلاقته بالحسين وعلاقته بالشعائر الحسينية هي التي جعل هذا التشييع الكبير أن يكون له في كربلاء وفي حرم الحسين وفي حرم الفضل العباس. During the period of his residence in Iraq, the eminent jurist would take part in the annual Grand March of Tuareej on the day of Ashura in the holy city of Kerbala. In his behavior, the eminent jurist followed the footsteps of his ancestors throughout his entire life. He behaved in accordance with the religious orders of Prophet Muhammad and his household peace be upon them. As a result, not once has any person witnessed him to do anything that was religiously frowned upon means detestable. In Gawar, مرجعه بزرگی بودن که علاوه بر جنبه فقه و اصول در جنبه پرچمداری ولایت اهل بیت خصوصیت خاصی داشتند همیشه در صف جلوی اهل بلا عزادار عزاداران و کسانی که تعظیم شعائر اهل بیت علیهم السلام داشتند ایشون در اون صفوف همیشه در صفوف مقدمشون بودند The eminent jurist would not tolerate any type of immoral conduct, and no one was allowed to commit any sins through gossiping and lying in his presence. He was also known among people for his kindness and his good behavior with the public, his family members, and his visitors. Every individual who visited his eminence was fascinated by his kind-heartedness and compassion. In addition to that, he would always smile while talking to the Shia Muslims, who are the followers of Prophet Muhammad and his immaculate family. In some و از جهت برخورد اخلاقی شنان اخلاق عالی و پدرانه برخورد می کرد با شاگردان خودش که انسان کمتر من البته 
اساتید دیگر خیلی عالی دیدم اما اینم یک یکی از افرادی است که واقعا می شود گفت نمونه هست در جهات اخلاقی و شاگرد پروری ایشون که بسیار اهمیت دارد در عالم تدریس He was generous towards his relatives, and though he wasn't feeling well at times, he was always observant of the religious obligation of visiting his relative, and despite all the hardships, he would travel to other cities to visit his relatives. His moral and financial support for his family members was never abandoned. He would behave the same way with the non-relatives of the Shia Muslims, the followers and lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. He was also a practicing Muslim who set an example in good manners as ordered by the religion of Islam. Whenever another religious leader would come to visit this holy man, he would welcome them with an open heart, and in times, he would pay them a visit in their offices as well. The aforementioned qualities are only a small drop in an ocean of this man's virtues, and they are indeed the result of his deep sincerity in serving the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. علم أن وفاته قريبة لذلك ترك إيران وجاء إلى العراق زار الكاظميين سلام الله عليهم وزار العسكريين في سامراء ووصل ليلة 25 محرم إلى كربلاء زار الحسين عليه السلام وبزيارته الحسين سقط وتوفي رضوان الله عليه Over. After finishing his visitation to the holy shrines in the city of Karbala, more specifically on Mahram 25 for the year 1435, in other words, October 27, the year 2016, the eminent scholar Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi Tabatabai Qummi passed away in the shrine of his martyr grandfather, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. حرم آقا بلفظلا باش دوستم زیارت میکردم یک دفعه نگاه کردم دیدم ایشون با یک حال عجیبی داره نزدیک زریح میارنشون و صحبت میکنم با قمر بنی هاشم خیلی خوشحال شدم که ایشون رو دیدم و با یک حال خیلی عالی یعنی یک لحظه یک ذره بگه احساس مریضی در وجودشون نه خیلی عالی الحمدلله خیلی خوشحال شدم اومدم شبکه به بچه هم گفتم که ایشون من زیارت کردم الحمدلله خیلی حالشون خوب بود و همه هم خوشحال شد تو که امروز صبح اومدم از شبت که مقبره آینه شیرازی رو فاضحه رو خونم براشون دیدم که تابوت ایشون رو داشتم اصلا جا خود Upon the tragic death of this great Shia scholar, several religious leaders such as the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi the eminent Ayatollah Sheikh Muhammad Ishaq Al Fayyad, the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Said Al Hakim, the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Rouhani, the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Sistani, the eminent Ayatollah Sheikh Bashir Al Najafi, and many other great religious leaders issued statements in which they addressed the Muslim nation for the tragic loss of this holy man and announced a national day of mourning. Similarly, as a sign of respect to this man, the seminaries of the holy cities of Najaf and Qom were closed for a while. <laughs> During the memorial service, which was held for this great man, many religious figures, cultural and academic dignitaries, representatives of religious leaders, lecturers and teachers of Islamic seminaries, as well as a great number of followers of the Ahlul Bayt were present.
وكافة مراجعنا العظام وحوزاتنا العلمية وكافة المؤمنين وكافة المسلمين بهذه الفاجعة بفقد المرجع الكبير آية الله العظمى السيد تقي القمي الطباطبائي العالم المجاهد العامل الموالي لأهل البيت صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم الذائب في حب الحسين عليه السلام نسأل الله تبارك وتعالى له علو الدرجات ولأهله الصبر والسلوان توفي في كربلاء وغسل بماء الفرات حسب وصيته ثم انتقل إلى متواه الأخير في جوار مولانا أمير المؤمنين Even though the blissful life of the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Taqi Taba Tabai Qummi, who was a great religious leader, came to an end on that day. But his legacy will live on forever, as he had left behind a great number of invaluable books for the seekers of the truth and perfection. The world could never make up for the loss of such knowledgeable man. May his soul find eternal salvation, besides his immaculate ancestors, Prophet Muhammad, and his family.